Hey guys and welcome back to another Renaissance 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to do another jump scare in which this one we're going to walk up the stairs when we see the ghost it's going to lock the player's camera onto the ghost so they can't look away from it. The camera is going to shake a bit but they'll have a jump scare the player won't be able to move away so it's kind of like they've seen a ghost and they're just in shock they're in horror of it. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So if we get in we walk up the stairs like so we turn around we see the ghost we can't move we can't move the camera the camera is shaking we had a sound effect and the ghost disappeared afterwards. You can see this is now perfect like so and then if we do the same thing we go up the stairs and look the same thing won't happen so this only happens for us once. So let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done this. So before we get into this I should also mention that I'm going to be using the Edith Finch house and common areas for this house so that's the house and the map that I'm in right now and this is just some free assets from the game Edith Finch that Epic Games have put on the marketplace for free so you can use and download these as well. So like I say I'm going to be using those today which again is this house here. So without further ado, let me get right into it. So what our first step is gonna be is we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. And once we're in here, we're just gonna scroll down and find some empty space. In here, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna add a custom event like so, and I'm gonna call this one look for ghost. So what this is gonna do is obviously check to see if the player is looking at the ghost as we only want to fire this off when the player looks at it. So to do this, we're gonna be getting a line trace. So if we come out of this and get a line trace by channel down here, the start of this is gonna be our camera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the camera from the top left up here. So just drag and drop it in like so. Out of this, I'm going to get world location and that's just gonna go straight into the start of this line trace. So we want to start drawing this line from the player's camera. And then we want to do it in the way they are looking, so straightforward. So to do that, we'll come out of the follow camera, or just your camera, and get forward vector, like so. Out of this return value, we're gonna get a vector multiplied by a float. And this float value is basically how long the line is. So I'm gonna set this to be about 1500. It doesn't need to be too long, it just depends on how far away you are from it, obviously. So I'm gonna be right near it, just at the top of the stairs. So 1500 should be a good length for me. Then I'm going to add both of these together. So I'm going to come out of the get world location again, get a vector plus a vector. The bottom value is going to be the return value of that multiplication. And that is going to go into the end of the line trace. And this addition here is just to keep it going in a straight line. So we're going to be basically drawing a line starting at the camera, going 1500 units in a straightforward direction. And that's going to be the end. So that's our line to see if that hits the ghost to see if we're looking at it. And after this, we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch with the condition going to the return value there. Putting the execution in there like so. And this is basically just checking to see if we actually hit something. Out of the out hit, we're going to break hit result as we want to check and see what we're hitting. So we're going to open it up and we want to come out of the hit actor as we are looking for an actor. So we're going to come out of that and cast to ghost BP. The ghost BP is my AI blueprint which I have. So let me also just close this there. Now obviously if you don't have one, you're gonna to want to make one. So the way I made this ghost BP is I just simply duplicated the third person character blueprint. So I'll right click, duplicate, and just rename it to whatever you want. Open it up and you can just delete the code in here as you don't need it. And that is your AI set up. So you can do that like so. And obviously in a mesh, you can change it to be the mesh you want. So it could be a clown like this, or the ghost or a zombie like that, anything you like. So you can just do that. And then once you've done that, cast to it here. So again, whatever you've named it, so I named mine GhostBP, just cast to GhostBP there, like so. And then what I want to do is come out of this again and hold down B, left click to get another branch, plugging this execution into the cast failed and the false of this branch. And the reason we're doing this is because if we haven't hit anything or we haven't hit the ghost, we want to just redo this and loop it to make sure that we are still checking to try and find this ghost. So the condition of this branch is gonna be a boolean. So I'm gonna right click on that, promote to variable, and call this should loop, question mark. Compile it and change its default value to be false. And what this does is it basically means if we haven't hit anything or we haven't hit the ghost, like I say, we want to loop it, but this should loop here is gonna see if we do want to loop it. So these are gonna make sure we do. This loop is just to see if we do actually want to loop it, because otherwise we might have stopped, we might have found something, or we just don't want to loop it as we're not in the correct area for it anymore. So there's no point looking for the ghost as it's not near us. So we're going to be setting this later on. Out of the true of this branch, we're going to hold down D left click to get a delay, plugging that in there like so. 
with the duration being something very small like 0 0.001. After completing this, we're going to call function look for ghost, which is this custom event we're making now. The reason we have the delay is just so that this has enough time to finish this code before calling it again so we don't get an infinite loop. Off of false, we don't need to do anything because if we don't want to loop, then we'll just stop the code there, meaning it will no longer be looping. So that works perfectly. We'll come back here off of this because obviously if we hit the ghost, we want to do something else, but we need to set that up first. So this is the initial part here done. So I'm just going to select this and hit C to comment it and call this look for ghost like so. And then underneath this, we're going to be doing the code which will come off of here. So you can scroll down under here, right click, add another custom event, and I'll call this look at ghost like so. So this is basically going to be the jump scare now. So we're going to be looking at the ghost, not being able to move, have camera shake, sound effects, all that good stuff here. And that's what we're going to be doing in this part. So what I'm going to do is again, straight after this, I'm going to hold down B and left click to get another branch, plugging that in there like so. But the condition of this is again, it's going to be should loop. Because obviously if we don't want to loop it, then when we come back in, it will come out false and we'll stop the loop there. But if it's true, so we do want to loop it, we're going to come out of that. We're going to get all actors of class with the actor class being the ghost BP that we have here or whatever you've named yours. So again, mine's ghost BP. The out actors of that, we're going to get a copy, this array function there. We can leave the index at zero as it's just our first one. If this isn't your first one, if this is the second one you place down, put it as one. If it's the fifth one you place down, put it as four. So you get the idea like that. Out of this, we're going to get the mesh and we're going to get the world location of it as well. So we can get get world location mesh. Now there's quite a few there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to get the mesh to start with. So get mesh down there. And then out of this, I'm going to get world location like so. And the reason we're doing this is because this is going to set up for looking at the ghost, obviously, but we just want the mesh. So we're looking directly at the center of the ghost. So that will just help set that part up. And above this, I'm going to right click and just get actor location. So this is now going to be the location of the character, like so. And I'll just drag those, move them up a bit. Out of the get actor location return value here. So for our character, I'm going to come out of that and find look at rotation. That one being the start the target being the get world location for the ghost. And the reason we're doing it that way around is because we want to find the look at rotation from our player to the ghost. So the player is looking at the ghost. As you can see, we found the look at rotation and got the return value. So what I want to do with this return value is drag out of that and set actor rotation. And so now this is essentially how we're going to be looking at the ghost. And we plug that into the get all actors of class there. Now what all this is going to do is just move the character we want to also move the camera. So an easy way to do that is right click and get player controller. The return value of that, we're going to set control rotation like so, plugging that in there like that. The new rotation of this is just going to go straight into the find lockout rotation again like that. So now we're going to be moving the player and their camera so they can see it as well. And now what this is going to do is it's going to do this once so then the player can move again. So we could just disable the input However, if they want to like back out the game, they want to press escape to pause or anything, disabling the input isn't bad. So you might also have different functions in which you want to use. So you might have special abilities on one, two, three, anything like that. So just to disable them from moving, all we're going to do is loop this. So if they ever move the camera, it's just going to basically set the rotation straight back to this. So this is just a slightly better way in case you have other functions set up as well. So again, that's going to be the loop, which we'll set up in a minute. So out of the set control rotation here, I'm going to hold down S, left click to get a sequence, plugging that in there. And that's because we want to do two separate lines of code. One of them we only want to do once and not loop. And the other one is just going to cause the loop. Off of then one, let's do that first as that's the loop. So I'm going to hold down D, left click to get a delay. Again, setting this to something very small, i.e. 0.001. Plugging that into then one there. Completed is going to be call function look at ghost. So it's going to be repeating and looping this custom event function we've just made here. And again, we're going to be setting the should loop value later. So if it's true, it's going to loop it. Off of then zero, so this is the part which isn't going to loop, we want to do once to prevent it from looping. So if hold on O, left click to get a do once there, plug that into then zero like so. As it sounds, this will only do this line of code once. Off the completed, we're going to get a play sound 2D like so. And this sound is going to be our jump scare sound effect. So I'll leave a link in the description down below for the one that I'm using. And mine is just jump scare 2 sound effect, like so, which you heard at the beginning of the episode, like that. 
And then out of this, we want to set up our camera shake, which we'll make in a minute, but we'll just put this in here now as well. So I'm going to play world camera shake like so. Again, the shake we'll set up in a minute and we'll create in a minute. The epicenter of this, I just want to get actor location. So it's just going to be where the player is. And then I'll change the outer radius to be 100, just in case they move a tiny bit after this starts, it will still affect them. So if you just make that a bit bigger, then obviously it will still affect the player all the time, which is good until obviously we don't need it, which will set up afterwards, like I say. All the other settings are fine. We'll change those when we make the camera shake. Off of this, I'm going to disable the character movement so they then can't walk anymore either. So I'm going to get the character movement there, drag out of that. I'm going to simply just disable movement like so, plugging that in there like this. Then after this, I'm going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, plugging that in there like so. And the delay of this is how long you want this to last. So I want this jump scare to last for three seconds. So the player is stuck looking at the ghost for three seconds. So I'm going to set this delay to be three. Again, customize that to be however long you want it to be. Out of the character movement again, we're going to set movement mode like so. Set movement mode, plug that into the complete of the delay. And we're going to set this back to walking so the player can now walk again. And then after this, we're also going to set the should loop boolean to false like so. So what's going to happen is essentially, while it's true, it's going to loop. And while it's looping, it's basically just going to make sure the player is always looking at the ghost and it's going to be looping like so. And at one time, it will play the sound effect play the camera shake and mean you can't move like so and so that's going to work perfectly so let me just select all this and hit C to comment it again I'm just going to call this one look at ghost and I'll go over the code again properly at the end but let's just finish setting up first so I've compiled and save that now that we've set up that function and that custom event we need to call it and to call it it's going to be off of this caster ghost BP here but up at the top for our look for ghost code which we made first so off of caster ghost BP just the top one there we're going to call function look at ghost like so, meaning it's going to then end this loop here because it's not going into that loop down there. And it's again going to start this loop down here instead. So you can just do this code off of this instead, but I just like this. It's a bit more efficient. It's a bit more better. I just think it looks better too, and it's easier to read and understand. So if we compile and save that, we're going to minimize this and we're going to open up our ghost BP. So again, yours might be there, but just open up whatever you've named it. So for me, I named mine ghost BP, so that is under content and ghost, but this might be a different place for you. I'm just going to open up ghost BP there. Then in here, we're going to go to the viewport, and there's only one thing we want to do in here, and it's going to be add component, and we're going to add a plane, like so. You can name this whatever you like. I'm just going to call this one line trace catcher, as that is what that is going to be doing. This is simply just going to increase the area around the ghost in which the player needs to look at. So essentially, if I just drag this out a bit and rotate it like so, Essentially, when the player looks at this plane, they're looking at the ghost, meaning that is then going to trigger the jump scare. But again, since we're making them look at the mesh, even if they see the plane over here, for example, so let me scale this up to size, I think that's a good size for me. So if they look at this plane, it's going to trigger the jump scare. So even if they look at it here, they will still start looking at the mesh, which is there. So this is going to be perfect. So I might just make this a little bit smaller. Again, this is just to make it easier for the player to see, because otherwise they will be looking at the ghost, but the line trace won't be. So even if they are, the line trace won't. So we just have this to up the area in which the player needs to look at. So it just makes it a lot better. So once you've done that, you can compile, save, and close that, as that is all we need to do in there. Although actually, sorry, there's one more thing. Open that up, we need to make it invisible. So obviously we don't want the player to see this, we just want it to be there for the collision. So all we're gonna do is just have it selected, scroll down on the right, and change it to be hidden in game and also untick visible as well. So compile and save that. And now we won't see it there. We've only got the collision for it for the line trace like so. And now we can close that again. And now what we want to do is we want to set up these should loop booleans here. So I only want to be firing this off if we're in a certain area around the ghost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this and where I want to be. So I want the player to be in this area just above the stairs here. I'm going to drag a box trigger. We just drag a box trigger in there like so and scale this up to the size I want it to be. So I'm going to do this like so. Scale this up a little bit more like that. So I think that's going to be good. So essentially, when the player comes up the stairs, if they're still here and they look at the ghost, it's going to trigger it. I'll move it back a bit like that, because even if they're here, they're going to be looking at the ghost, so it will trigger it. But if they go up the stairs and just straight down this corridor here, which there's nothing there, but they might do it, it's not going to be firing off the code anymore, looking for the ghost. 
because obviously they won't be able to see it or if they're downstairs it's not going to do it because again they won't, they won't be able to see it so it just makes the code a bit more efficient again so you can do that like so so basically when they're in this area it's going to be checking to see if they're looking at the ghost which is there so let's also do that as well let's place in the ghost so i'm going to place the ghost in over here as this is where i want it like so let me just rotate it to be looking at the player like that so i think that's a good position there and then let's reselect the box trigger like so and go to blueprints and open level blueprint like this in here i'm going to right click get a begin overlap so add on actor begin overlap right click and add on actor end overlap like so and these are just the overlap events for when the player is inside or outside of this box trigger the other actor is basically the actor we want to trigger this so that's going to be our character so we're going to cast that character so for me that is cast to third person character but for you it's going to be third first whatever you've named it it's just this character here which we've done the code in we'll do that for both of these so for begin and end overlap like that and then very simply as well just as third person character in both of these we're going to set should loop so set should loop like that, duplicate that down here, like so, make sure the target goes into as third person character. The top one is going to be ticked, the bottom one unticked, so true and false. So when we're in the box trigger, which is this one, we are going to loop it. When we're not in the box trigger, we're not going to loop it. And then also on the top one, we want to trigger the look for ghost. So we are looping it, and then it's also call function look for ghost, like so. So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that we are looping it, and it's also going to call this event here so that we are then looking for the ghost. When we find it, it will look at the ghost and do all this good stuff down there. So we can compile, save that, and that is that part done. Now there's one final step, and that is just creating the camera shake. This is very simple as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to minimize that, right click, go to blueprint class, and then we're going to open up the all classes section down here, and now we're going to search for something. That something is going to be a camera shake. Let's just search for camera shake like so. And we'll get this bottom one down here like that and hit select. I'm going to name this jump scare CS for camera shake like so. You can name this whatever you like. And let's open it up straight away. Now in here I'm going to be using some settings which I got from the Unreal Docs quite a while ago because I have made a video on camera shake as well. So I'm just using the same values, just tweaking them just ever so slightly to get it perfect for this. So the oscillation duration is how long you want the camera shake to last for. So again I set that to be 3 seconds in my code. So I'm going to set it to be 3 there. The blend in, blend out time is obviously it blending in and out, so how smooth it is. I'm going to leave those as default as I don't really need it to be any smoother as it's a jump scare. You want it to be kind of quite violent, quite just snapping in and out. So that's good for me. And then the rot oscillation is obviously how much it's moving. So the amplitude is kind of how strong, how severe it is, and the frequency is obviously how frequent it's doing it, how much. So the amplitude I'm going to set to 3, the frequency to 25 leave the initial offset as random and the waveform is sine wave and that's just so that it looks different each time it's random it's not the exact same so it just doesn't look like you're looping it the yaw will do the exact same 3 and 25 you want to keep these very similar if not the same so it doesn't look really weird this just makes it look better but obviously again you can customize these values to be absolutely whatever you like and then we're not going to do anything with the roll as that is obviously the rotation of it we don't want to do that the lock oscillation so location oscillation we're going to change as well. So the amplitude I'm going to put as 100, frequency as 1. The initial offset I'm going to put as 0, so it's the same each time. Then the Y, we won't do anything. The Z, set the amplitude to 10, frequency to 25, the initial offset as random. And that is now the code and values in there done, so we can compile and save that. Now I haven't gone over too much of what they do, I'm just kind of giving you a very basic overview of them, of what each one does. Hopefully you kind of understand that, I've given you some good values as well. Like I say, I do have a video in which I went more in depth into this. This is just to show you how it's done. And again, these are some good values which I found and I'm using. Like I say, I did kind of go over what they do as well. But either way, that is the code done. So compile, save that. Back in our character blueprint here, we'll find the play wild camera shake. And now in the shake, we can actually put our jump scare CS there for our jump scare camera shake, like so. So now compile and save, this code should be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run you through it all just to make sure that you understand it all. So again, we've got that level blueprint in which we're setting this boolean to be true and false. So when we enter the box collision, it's going to set the boolean to be true and it's going to call this custom event here. What this is going to do is going to make a line trace from the camera 1500 units forward to see if we're looking for the ghost. If we hit something, it's going to check to see if it's the ghost. 
if it isn't the ghost or we don't hit anything it's going to essentially check to see if we want to loop it and if we do it's going to loop it if we don't it won't do anything or if we do hit the ghost it's going to look at the ghost so that's calling this event down here looking at the ghost it's again seeing if we should loop if we shouldn't it won't do anything and if we should it's going to get the ghost blueprint find its location and find our location and then look at it determining those two locations there so it's going to then set the player's rotation and the camera rotation and then it's going to loop that again obviously only if we should loop it up here and since we're looping it we're going to be constantly looking at it even if we try to not look at it and it's only going to do this one once here and what it's doing once is playing a jump scare doing the camera shake and making sure we can't move three seconds later we're going to make sure we can move and it's going to stop looping as well like so so i hope going over that explains it a bit more better for you hope you can understand it hope you learn from it all that good stuff so again if we compile save minimize we should be able to hit play and test this out like so so now if we go up the stairs we're in this box collision so if we go over here uh, look where the ghost is nothing happens if i go back in the box collision look at the ghost we're looking at it i can't move the camera and i can't move myself now i can i can move around again we had the jump scare we had the camera shake although you see the ghost is still here so i missed off one little thing at the very end of the code so we open up our character blueprint again all we need to do is come out of this get a copy here under look at ghost go to the very end of the code and we just need to get a destroy actor like so and now this should work a lot better this should then also get rid of the ghost at the very end as well put that in there after the set should loop now this should work perfectly for it so compile save close that again hit play to test it and i think that'll be it for this video so we've done everything we've wanted to do again i'm going to show you this again with it getting removed at the end as well but essentially what we've done is we've created this jump scare in which if we are in an area we look at the ghost it's going to play a sound effect, stop us from moving, stop us from moving the camera, have camera shake, get rid of the ghost at the end, all that good stuff. So let me show you what it's going to look like now. So again, at the end, you saw that my camera just kind of did that and I moved. And that's because that whole time I was just pressing WASD to try and move and I was just moving my camera, moving my mouse, sorry, to show and prove that you can't actually move during that whole thing. And you saw at the end, the ghost disappeared and despawned as well. And I can't trigger this anymore as it's gone. So that works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.